are the specific symptoms to watch out for with coronavirus? Well, the big three are fever, cough, and shortness of breath, especially shortness of breath, because that could mean that the virus is attacking the lungs, and that's, of course, the serious side effect. About 80% of the, pa of the patients who get coronavirus have what appears to be mild disease, but the 20% can get serious disease that could uh, even require a breathing tube. How is coronavirus different from the flu? Well, you know, it's spread in a similar way, which is felt to be by droplets, okay? So the, similarly, you cough, you sneeze, you have a droplet go out, and if somebody's within, say, around six feet of you, uh, that could go into their mouth or their nose or eyes and you can get infected. Uh, so there are some obvious things that you can take from that, which is when you cough or sneeze, cough into the crook of your arms. I mean, don't cough into your hands and then say, hi, how are you? Or certainly don't cough out into the air. Make sure you wash your hands because there was a study I just looked at last night uh, of medical students who they videotaped them and they touched their face 23 times an hour, 23 times an hour. So it's hard to keep your hands below your knee, just be below your, below your chin. So uh, just wash your hands frequently, 20 seconds supposedly. I know it's hard to do that. Um, so those, those are some uh, things about how, it, how it's uh, spread similarly. Now, how it's different is the mortality rate of the flu is felt to be about one in a thousand. Uh, the mortality rate for this so far, uh, the latest is about 14 out of 1,000, 1 1.4 percent. Uh, so you could think that's, that's a lot more, more than 10 percent, more than 10 times the rate. But people think that the rate for coronavirus may actually be a lot lower than we think because there are a lot of cases it's likely that we're not seeing, we're not realizing they have low, uh, either minimal symptoms or no symptoms. So if it tends, turns out that uh, the mortality rate is a lot lower. It could be closer to like a bad flu season. Not nothing. Remember, we have more than 30 million cases of flu this year and 18,000 deaths so far. So the best thing you can do if you're watching this, folks, get vaccinated against the flu It'll, to help protect you and your family. Well, what determines who gets tested for coronavirus and who doesn't? Well, that's changed. So at first it was people coming from high risk areas or people who had been in contact with somebody who came from high risk area who, who might have symptoms. Uh, now they're saying, uh, depending upon the clinical picture, that if you do not have any of those risk factors, but you have serious disease, meaning like you're hospitalized with pneumonia, you can test for it. We're a little bit behind the eight ball right now in terms of testing. So I spoke to the CDC this morning. By midweek, we, they, they told me they expect to have the ability to test about 75,000 people. That's not nearly enough for the kind of sort of milder symptoms that people might have. You know, you walk into a doctor's office and you have a little bit of a cough and a little bit of a fever, and, but you're not really short of breath. I mean, how are we going to know whether it's out there in the community or not? So we need more of those kind of kits for acute illness and very important. We need a thing called serologic testing. What does that mean? It's a blood test that looks for evidence of past exposure, uh, antibodies, to tell you, oh, you had this two, three, four weeks ago and you didn't even realize it, but now you recovered. Why should we not be panicking in the United States about coronavirus? Well, you know what the best treatment for fear is, is facts. And I personally, and I'm a practicing physician, I'm not panicking, okay? It's not going to be nothing. I'm not poo-pooing this. It's going to be a bumpy ride, and people will get sick, and there will be deaths. But it's not really a reason to panic. And panic begets panic begets panic. So I think people need to take a deep breath, listen to the CDC, go to cdc.gov. There's such great information there. They update it all the time. And I'll tell you, I'll end with this. The scientists who are on this are amazing. Anthony Fauci, Tony Fauci, head of the NIH Infectious Disease Division, um, he's been on every, the front line of every epidemic since HIV. And you know how they made a fast vaccine against uh, this new coronavirus? They took the one against Zika, which took three months to make. They unscrewed the part that makes it specific to, for Zika. They screwed on the part that makes it specific for coronavirus. And now they've already shipped this for testing. It's going to take a year before it goes through the testing process, phase one, phase two, phase three, to be more widely available. But there are really smart people uh, who are all over this. But look, it's very hard to stop the spread of this. If you've ever had kids who've come home with a cold, how easy is it to stop that cold from spreading to the rest of the family? Fortunately, about 80% of the time, it's mild disease. The other 20%, it's serious. And there's supportive care. So sooner the diagnosis, the better. All right, doctor, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Nice to talk with you. You too.